Hey guys, Sleepy here and welcome to a brand new discussion vlog. The topic of today's video is about why I enjoy collecting video games for their fun and entertainment value over monetary value. And I'm going to talk about why I like to collect video games just because, you know, they're fun and I enjoy playing them over buying video games just because they're rare or uncommon or hard to find or because they're expensive or because everyone and their other and their brother is collecting them as well and trends and stuff. So I thought this would make a great uh, topic to discuss. So I would love for you guys to participate in this. Feel free to leave a comment as I do enjoy reading your guys' wonderful comments and interacting with you guys. If you would rather film a video response to this topic, that'd be awesome as well. I do enjoy watching your guys' video responses and I do appreciate everybody who has uh, filmed video responses to my previous discussion topics. I just ask you guys let me know about the uh, video response because I'm not always alerted by YouTube and it really does suck if I would miss out on it. So let me know about it, that way I can check it out. I also post a link as a comment on this video so people can check out your video response as well. I do want to shout out my uh, buddy Xman777B. He's a really good dude, been a friend of the channel for quite some time, always leaves great wonderful comments. And he was just talking about uh, this topic himself, about how he notices that it uh, seems like a lot of people these days are kind of in this uh, for collecting for purposes like just showing off or collecting it just because everybody else wants to. And it doesn't seem like people actually enjoy playing the games that they're picking up and buying. It seems like they're just buying them because they're rare, expensive, or they're the hottest game to buy right now. Kind of like I've been seeing with uh, Xbox 360 titles. And so I told them, you know, that I was uh, actually talking about this topic in my head. I've been thinking about it and that I was actually gonna film a uh, video discussion topic about this. So, X-Man, I do appreciate you talking about it, and uh, that's what's helped me make uh, this video. So I always enjoy uh, getting ideas from you guys as well, so it's really great. I wrote down some points on a paper for me so I don't forget, <laughs> lose my train of thought. Uh, just helps keep me on, on focused uh, with some of these discussion vlogs. So we'll get started up here with like, like the first point I have for why I enjoy collecting them for fun and entertainment is, you know, video games were meant to be played. You know, video games are... Uh, a form of art but it's just similar to like how movies are you know a movie is meant for you to watch it and experience so you can experience a show or a movie that the creator made for you directors you know the writers you know they create a show for you to bring you into a world uh, with characters and stuff and they want you to experience it well you really can't experience a movie unless you actually watch it you, know, you can't buy terminator 2 and then just have it sit on the shelf and look at the picture like oh that looks pretty cool look there's, a, there's arnold schwarzenegger as a terminator on the cover oh this looks great you know you're not getting the full experience just looking at the picture on the box the VHS tape or you have a blu-ray or DVD whatever it is you know movies were meant to be watched so I really don't know anybody who collects videos movies and stuff TV shows that just collects them to look at oh well I got this rare box set of whatever this show is and I, I got it just because it's rare you know everybody that I know that collects movies and DVDs myself included I know my buddy Dean uh, several others they take the time to actually watch the films that they buy and have in their collections well I'm the same way with video games you know I've been enjoying playing video games forever since I was four years old I'm gonna be 40 next year so, <laughs> so we're talking like uh, 35 years of me playing video games and I played a lot of games in that time But I know that video games were meant to be played now. I do have some games that are sealed now these are some are, are a rare Exception to my rule of not of collecting sealed games with the exception of a few rare things like It's rare exception of like something that's really special to me like having these boxed Terminator Resistance game, like this is the PlayStation 5 Collector's Edition. I bought this to help support the developers Teon because I had a I have an open copy for the Xbox One that I was enjoy playing. I don't have a PlayStation 5 anyways, but I bought this because I wanted it as a collector's piece. So I do have a few collector's pieces that are special, like this is really special to me. And so was when they released the Series X Collector's Edition, which was exclusive to Europe and I'm really glad that I have this in my collection because I wanted to help Taeon again. So there are a few sealed pieces in my collection, not a ton, but there are a few special ones I will make an exception for of a game that I absolutely love, but 
I will have a regular copy or another duplicate of it that it's open that I can actually play and enjoy it. I'm not going to own a game that I can't actually play at all anyway. You know, I have to have a way to play it. But there are a few exceptions like that where I will have those as a collector's piece because it's something that I really love that's really special to me. Like, I love the uh, Ghostbusters video game, and I own that on every console that's available, even the modern uh, remasters. That was just what I absolute favorite Ghostbusters game of all time. And so I do own a couple of those that are uh, sealed because I've beat it on other consoles, so I didn't need to play them on there. But I wanted to own it just because there's some of those special pieces. So I do have a few special pieces myself, things that are just for uh, collecting purposes, but the majority of my collection is just owning games I actually want to play and experience. There's a couple of consoles as well that I do have games that I'll never play, and that's because of going for a full set for them, and that is the Nintendo 64 and the original Xbox. Uh, those are two sets I completed besides the there's two titles I need for the 64 to complete for the North American set I have 294 of the 296 uh, set so there are some games in there like an Elmo's letter adventure and you know whatever a Barbie horse adventures for the original Xbox that I don't want to have I simply got those for collecting uh, purposes but I wouldn't recommend that I would recommend just buy the games you want to play and experience because they are meant to be played you know these games aren't meant to just sit on the shelf and collect us. I can understand, you know, if you're like me, you want to have a couple special pieces that are sealed and on display because you want to show your love or maybe, you know, you're like you're a huge Halo fan, so you might get multiple different copies of Halo games. Maybe get them signed by the developers of Bungie or the voice actors or something. You know, they might get a promotional piece. You know, I can understand having that, but you don't want your entire collection to be like that because then you can't have any fun of actually playing the video games. You know, these people take time to craft great worlds and characters and when you play them you know video games are an interactive medium you know they're only kind of medium where you can really be part of the story you know you control the characters you control the pace of the story you get to be part of the story it's really cool especially if you get into like the vr and stuff which i played on my brother's uh pc it was really cool with the headset on it really felt like you were in the game i mean that's what these games are meant to be played they're fun you should enjoy playing them they shouldn't just be pieces that you buy so you can show off to strangers on the internet or buying it just because it's rare or expensive. You know, I want to be able to actually play and have fun with them. Uh, so that's this. And the second point was just talking about how they're fun. They bring me enjoyment. And I like them over collecting games just because they're expensive and rare. Um, I also like, here's another one, here's the third point is I like getting lost in a game's world for a few hours and, you know, helps distract us uh, from reality, you know, I mean, the, the world is a shitty place at times and it can be stressful at times, you know, work and just you have issues with family stuff and life just comes up and so sometimes it can just be a really stressful day so sometimes after a really hard day at work or a stressful day or something sometimes you know I like to pop in a video game and just get lost in the world like this uh, Ghostbusters 2 the new Ghostbusters 2 that was uh, exclusive to uh, PAL territories it's a fun isometric Ghostbusters game I've gotten really far with this game but I have not beat it yet but sometimes you know you just want to get lost in a world you know you're just having a bad day you come home pop in a really fun video game and you can forget your troubles uh, sometimes you might play a funny game that's uh, gonna cheer you up or you know maybe you want to play a, a shooting game you want to get out some aggression or something on something else you know, so you have options and stuff to play but they are meant to be played and uh, experienced and sometimes they're a nice little distraction from reality now obviously you don't want to go crazy and completely isolate yourself and get sucked into just the world, virtual world you know that's not healthy but it is okay occasionally to take some time to just relax and unwind by playing video games and i like to do that after stressful days uh here we go number four you know i started collecting video games when i was a child at four years old i've shared this story many times you know i started with the regular nintendo and playing super mario brothers at my uh, cousin's house when she was babysitting us and it absolutely blew my mind and I love the Mario characters and Nintendo and that's what made me the video gamer that I am today and I've played a lot of games from tons of different consoles you know I've grown up as the generations have come and gone and I've got to see 
get video games being very primitive in graphics to they, what they are today here at ninth gen with just absolutely lifelike graphics sometimes. And I've had a lot of fun with that. I was also collecting video games before it was a popular thing. You know, in this today in 2024, every one of their brothers into video games. There's I've seen elderly people out there buying video games and grandmas and random age people. You know, I've seen people collecting video games from little kids all the way up to people like in their 80s and 90s like it's just that popular now and because something is popular you're gonna have more people that are into collecting it but you're also gonna have prices driven up and that's where we are today where video games are just absolutely outrageous in price and a lot of people get upset by it and they're like oh god I can't buy these video games for cheap anymore because everyone their brother wants them and it really sucks and I can understand it does kind of suck because of that but I was buying these video games before they were rare, before they were expensive, because I just enjoyed playing and playing the old stuff. Now, we go back like 15 years ago now, the early 2000s, even 20 some years now, the early 2000s, you know, I was collecting things like for the 3DO, for the Sega Dreamcast, you know, PlayStation 2 uh, was out. So people didn't really care about the older generations like they do now. Like retro gaming was not huge when I was. Uh, really started like building up my collection because I had stuff as a kid and didn't really sell it but I started like really collecting when I was in high school in the 2000s and I was getting stuff cheap like I got a 3DO console for $30 and got games like you'd be lucky to get that console for 300 bucks today on like eBay and stuff but at that time no one really cared it wasn't popular uh, YouTube was pretty in much in its infancy so there wasn't a whole lot of content creators out there um, I started enjoying uh, people here on YouTube and it was cool because I was finding people in this community who were similar who had similar interests to me like wow these guys like playing old video games like me like you know they like playing um, that old Silent Hill for PlayStation 1 like that game was amazing I remember that and you know we were talking about buying these games you know we're going out to thrift stores and sharing our experiences of finding games cheap because nobody cared about them you can go to goodwill all day and get these for a couple bucks because nobody was doing that kind of stuff there was just a few people a handful of us that were really doing this and making videos and so i was able to make connections with people online because locally i wasn't really finding too many people here who actually enjoyed these old games you know they were more into like i gotta play the modern stuff i don't like the old crap like that's outdated why are you playing that people have always have told me that friends and stuff like I remember when the Genesis came out my buddy was done with his regular Nintendo and he actually traded it to me for some of my extra Genesis games and so I was playing the NES while I had the Genesis and so it's always kind of been like that until I would say the um 2010s is when it started getting more popular and started like taking off and more people have been getting into it and youtubers have just like exploded as far as like sub counts go and it just kind of became mainstream now in pop culture it was kind of like oh video games that's like a boys thing it's kind of like a uh that's kind of like a nerdy thing to do and that's not the cool thing to do when you're in high school and so it now it's, it's more accepted there's a lot more women who are into playing video games and stuff but when i was doing it you know everybody wasn't doing it so prices were dirt cheap and that's why i have the collection i do because i was able to buy stuff when it was uh cheap if i had to start buying right now in 2024 i would have a very very tiny collection because i just couldn't afford it and i also wouldn't want to spend the massive amount of money that some of these video games uh command and so with that too, you know, like I don't collect my stuff because they have a monetary value. I know some people like to talk about how much their collection's worth and, oh, I got, you know, I got this thousand dollar game for 10 bucks, you know, oh yeah, woo, I'm awesome, dude, look at me. And like, you know, they kind of make it a competition with each other. And you can see that in some people's videos, some people's posts on Instagram and Facebook uh, game groups, you know, it seems like. They care more about showing off what they're buying and who can get the better deal than actually wanting to have the game to play it. Like I've got games in my collection that are expensive now, but I got them back when they were cheap because I wanted to play them. Like this uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine Uncaged Edition, which is getting up there in price. You know, I loved this game when it first came out. I rented it from Family Video, had a blast with it, so then I went out and bought my own copy. But this has become very expensive this year because of the Xbox 360 Marketplace shutting down. Now, it is an amazing game, and it's expensive. Usually, the really expensive games are expensive because they had small print runs, or they were shit on by developers. Sometimes, 
they were wrongfully made uh, terrible, you know, like made fun of by people. Like, you know, they'll say, oh, this game is shit, and it really wasn't. But there are a lot of times where games are rare and expensive, but because they were shitty, and people weren't buying them because of that, but because they're so were so limited in print run because they didn't make as many because people weren't buying them all of a sudden they become popular and someone makes a video saying like oh you gotta buy x-men origins wolverine now you gotta play this experience well then the demand goes up and there's only so much supply and then the prices will go up and that's what you see and what's been happening a lot with xbox 360 this year is so many more people are getting into it but there are people who are simply buying games just because it's hot you know they kind of got sucked into this whole i gotta buy games now i gotta buy them everyone else is buying them, so i should buy them as well and i suggest Buy the games you want to play because they're fun. Don't just buy them because someone else is buying them. Just because you see me buy Borderlands Game of the Year Edition for Xbox 360 doesn't mean you should go out and play it. Though this game is awesome and I would recommend it and it's pretty cheap because it has all the DLC. But, you know, buy it because you want to play it. Don't buy it just because it's expensive or rare or whatever the case is. You know, get it because you want it. Don't get it because someone else has it or get it to show off. I know there's I've run into people who have made up stories and try to make lies about going to the um, thrift stores or yard sales. And I've seen those posts on uh, Instagram and there's a whole thread about it and how people are like, oh God, here's another one of those. You know, I got a hundred uh, NES games for $2 from some grandma in a yard sale. And they show you all the rarest games from their collection that are all worth thousands and thousands of dollars. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, yeah, sure, buddy. I'm sure you found it. Or I found it on the side of the road. I've seen crazy stuff like that, but sometimes it's to stroke people's uh, egos, but <laughs> I don't get it, but there is stuff like that. And then also your collection's monetary value will fluctuate over the years, even daily, weekly, monthly. You know, some games will go up, they'll go down, and it all just is dictated by the market and what people are buying at the time and what consoles are hot right now. Like NES and Super Nintendo games are starting to kind of decline as the younger generations who grew up with the like seventh gen right now, Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii games are kind of going up where a few years ago, sixth gen games, original Xbox, PlayStation 2, and GameCube games going, were going up. Now we're to where 360 games, and eventually we'll start having Xbox, the eighth gen, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 games. We'll start to see their increase as people who grew up with them get older, get out of high school, get into college, start getting their first jobs and having money, they'll start buying this stuff. And so that's going to increase the demand for it. So your collection is going to go up and down. And so if you're buying it simply because you want to have it worth a lot of money, there's no guarantee it's going to stay valuable forever. You know, sometimes they reprint a game, re-release it digitally, and sometimes those physical copies value will go down. So then it's just, you know, then it goes, are you why are you collecting for the monetary value? Is it because you want to uh, sell it someday? You know, are you looking to make money from it? Because are you investing in it? I've run into plenty of people who are investing in video games and believe that they're going to become millionaires selling these video games. And, you know, that's the furthest thing from the truth. You know, I don't know anybody that's going to ever become a millionaire selling video games uh, to people on the internet or in their uh local store if they have one you know i don't see where you're going to make all this money selling video games because you have to have somebody to buy said video games and not every single video game is sought after or worth a ton of money and there are a lot of video games that sit and i had a buddy on here uh retro i think it's tribon is his name he was talking about before this year he had a hard time selling 360 games because it wasn't popular like it is right now in 2024 so he had a lot of stuff to just kind of sat around so if you're getting this hoping that you're going to become rich from it you know the reality is you're probably not that's probably not going to uh, happen and then this is a big one too which i've heard many people talk about and even like my grandparents talked about this my parents talked about you know your collection is only worth what someone's willing to pay and that's for anything you have in life you know you could say this uh kingdom of paradise game is let's say it's worth a thousand dollars it's not but we could say it's worth a thousand dollars well it really is only worth a thousand dollars if you get somebody to buy the game from you for that thousand dollar price so unless somebody gives you the money you for it you know you can say it has a monetary value but it really doesn't have any value until somebody physically hands you the cash you hand them the game they hand you a thousand bucks cool that was worth a thousand bucks i just got a thousand dollars for it but it's only 
worth what someone's willing to pay for that. So you have to understand that in a business, you know, <laughs> if people aren't paying that price for it, it's not worth that because nobody's buying it. So someone has to be willing to pay you the price. Also, you know, depending on uh, the size of your collection too, if you plan to sell, if you have a massive collection like I do, you guys have seen my huge massive wall and this isn't even everything. You have like over 5,000 video games and let's say you, you know, you value your own collection and let's say, oh, I've got a collection worth uh, $200,000. Okay, cool. Your collection's worth $200,000. You plugged it into the price charting website or whatever site to give you an average of what the collection is worth. And let's say, you know, oh, I, I bought this stuff to invest and I'm gonna sell it one day to fund my kids college fund or I'm gonna buy a house with it or whatever and there have been people I've seen that have made some good money off of video games but long-term investing you know it's just not there because you have to find someone who's willing to buy your entire collection and how many people do you know are just gonna come to you oh yeah here I got this two hundred thousand dollar collection uh, give me two hundred thousand dollars and you can have the whole thing now you don't have to go out and spend any time finding it I did all the work for you, you can buy my big collection well the only people you're gonna find that are gonna buy your collection are gonna be resellers so these are guys who professionally buy and sell video games maybe they own a video game store maybe they don't they just sell online well, they're not going to give you full value for your collection. If your collections were two hundred thousand dollars, they might give you, let's say, eighty thousand or sixty thousand or something, and they're going to tell you the same thing that other people would tell you as far as when they're buying your stuff. Is like, you know, I gotta buy all this stuff. I gotta test it. I gotta clean it. I gotta restore it. I gotta list it, and I gotta sell it. I got seller fees and stuff. So they're not going to give you maximum value for your collection. So if you're looking to sell it all at once, you know, you're going to have to sell it at a discount because the only people that are going to buy it from you are the people who are going to resell it. Same thing if you go to a local video game store, like my local video game stores buy entire collections at time and I got a buddy that works for him and that's what he does for his boss. They have over 40 locations. He goes out and hunts down collections and he's bought some from people who were like a guy that had a, like a thousand strategy guides. He was selling them. Another guy was selling a bunch of stuff from his collections and they were selling them to fund like weddings weddings or a down payment on a house and they got a good amount of money for their collection but they didn't get full maximum value because my buddy and his boss for their stores they have to get it at a price that they can resell it to make money because they're in it for making money you know they're not just going to buy you know let's say the Zelda Wind Wakers are worth a hundred bucks well they're not going to give you a hundred dollars if they sell it for a hundred dollars maybe they'll give you 60 or for it so they can make a forty dollar profit so you're going to have to understand that you're not going to get full market value for your collection because Nobody's gonna have that kind of money to drop on. You're not just gonna find some rich guy that just happens to love video games. A millionaire is gonna come to you. Oh yeah, here, here's $200,000 in cash. Thanks, man. I can't wait to finally have a collection. That's not gonna happen. So if you wanna get maximum value of your collection, you're gonna have to sell it piece by piece online or in person. And that's a lot of time, money, effort. And if you're selling online, you gotta pay the, fee the fees, like 15% in fees and you know, there's a lot of headache when it comes to doing that. So if you're trying to do this as an investment, you know, it's not a great thing to invest in. I would rather invest in my 401k, mutual fund stocks, real estate. That's something you can really invest in that'll really bring you value in the future where video games are a collectible market. And there's some great people here on YouTube, some great channels that I've seen that talk about uh, collectibles and they do this for a living and what they've seen, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I would recommend checking out videos uh, like that if this is something you're looking into like to do as a side hustle or make money from. Um, because my ninth point here, you know, video games are just not a sound investment because they fluctuate so much. So I would recommend checking out those videos. Also, the IRS and taxes. Um, you know, when you sell things, uh, the laws have changed. It used to be like uh, so many sales are $20,000 and you would have to report that income. Well, you have to make one sale this year, $600. And they report this stuff, Facebook Marketplace, eBay, PayPal, all these things report this stuff to the IRS. Well, you owe taxes on the stuff that you're selling. So if you're selling um, Silent Hill for 300 bucks, you, know, you owe tax on that $300. Now, you can deduct what you paid for and you just have to pay the profit. If you paid $100 for this and sold it for 200, now you only owe the tax for 100 bucks. But you gotta be able to prove what you paid for it with receipts and stuff. So if you're gonna get 
uh, kind of big into selling video games to help fund your collection and stuff, you know, you want to talk to a tax professional because you don't want to get hit with an audit from the IRS. You know, the Uncle Sam's here with its hand out and hey, hey, buddy, you know, you sold forty thousand dollars in video games. Did you set aside thirty percent for taxes just to be on the safe side to make sure that you can pay uh, the taxes on the money that you made because they're going to send you that ten ninety nine. You got to file, and some people can be like whoa shit I didn't realize look how much money I owe to the government now and I didn't set any money aside you know I know a lot of people who have built their collections up by reselling games and using that money to buy games but you want to make sure you set some of that aside because you don't want to get uh a rude awakening from the uh, IRS because that can happen to you. They really are looking at it. Uh, they know things are ways people are making money with side hustles and stuff and there's new things that are being taxed and laws are coming out. So just be aware that if this is something you're going to do as a side hustle to make money and you're going to be selling a lot of stuff, talk to a tax professional, CPA, somebody to do your taxes for you so you do it properly and you're paying the proper taxes and you know what you can write off and you can't write off. You know, you got to treat it like a business separating your finances and stuff. So definitely talk to a tax professional. Um, are you going to do you have insurance for your video game collection because, you know, these are valuable to you. They're worth money, but you got to understand like when you're collecting your collection, they're only going to give you a certain value for your collection and it really varies. And the more proof you have of stuff, pictures, videos, whatever it is, because I do have mine insured, but you know, you have to understand the realistic. If your, val your collection is worth $200,000, you're not going to get $200,000 from your uh, insurance company because they don't like to pay. So you'll be lucky to get much money out of it at all. But it is nice to have, but you know, there's one thing to consider about your uh, collection. Um, Another thing too I noticed for people like you can tell like if they actually enjoy playing the video games like I love this for Warhammer 40,000 shoot us blood and teeth game for the switch it was also on PS4 it's a really cool uh, cartoon style little shooter for in the Warhammer 40,000 universe really cool is you can really tell if somebody's actually played some of the video games that they recommend by the way they talk about them. Do they know any details of the game? Like when I share a game with you guys, I'm only talking about it because I've actually come from a place of playing it. Like my weekly gaming playlist series where I talk about the games I'm playing and I show you gameplay. I'm coming from a place of actually playing the games. I'm not just going to share them because I think you guys should check it out and it's cool. And I'm just going to read you the back of the box and be like, oh yeah. The peaceful world of so and so and this guy yeah yeah it's a cool rpg you guys should play it but they never really played it you know i'm not going to ever recommend a game to you guys unless i've played it. and i've seen videos people saying oh these are the hottest 360 games you should buy this year and i could tell that literally the only knowledge they had on the games was because they read the back of the box or someone talked about it. I mean, they, they can't tell you what the main character's name is, anything about the story. They can't give you a summary of what it's like, the gameplay, and they're recommending a game to you. Well, you really shouldn't be recommending a game unless you're coming from a place of knowledge and experience of actually playing it. Uh, here's another thing too, with as far as why I like for the fun of it and not the monetary value is you have to have a realistic expectation of what you're going to find in the world, especially in 2024. You know, you're not going to just go out and you're going to find tons of copies of Silent Hill because this game's going for like 200 some dollars or more here locally at game stores. You're just not going to go out and find this at yard sales and thrift stores. You know, a lot of times you're going to go out and not find stuff, but you'll see videos here on YouTube of people scoring gold left and right. And some of them are fake. Some of them are real. Depends on how your area is, what your population is. Do you have a lot of younger people or you a lot of older people? You know, is it like a farming community? Is it a big city? You know, so your, your things you're going to find is not always going to be the best stuff. So sourcing for your collection. So you have to have that realistic ex expectation of what you're going to find. Uh, do research on the games that you buy, which I do. Before I buy a game, you know, I'll check it out by watching some gameplay videos on YouTube. I'll watch a couple different people's reviews. I'll look at articles, uh, read it in a magazine, and check out, like, is this game cool? Like, 
when I found out about the new Ghostbusters 2 for the uh, NES. And this is a reproduction because it was not released here in the US. But I checked out some games like, wow, this looks pretty neat and that looks cool. I also uh, have an emulator so on my uh, Wii, so I was able to play it on there. I'm like, yeah, I really love this game, so I want to buy a copy. You know, take the time to research some of these games before you buy. And just because I recommend it to you, I want you to take the time to go and research it and see is this something I really love? Yeah, this is cool, or maybe it's not for me. And I found some games like that that were recommended. They look cool, checked out videos, and then I was just like, you know, eh, it's not really for me. So I would recommend doing your research for it. Also, to having an end game goal of what you plan to do with your collection, you know, are you collecting these because you want to play and have them? Like, I collect them because I want to have them. I'm not buying them because they're valuable. I was buying them before they were, and if they were worthless and nobody cared about them, I'd still collect them because they're fun for me. They bring me info enjoyment and entertainment. I'm not buying them to show off to people on the internet. I'm not buying them for other people. I'm not buying them because Joe, somebody told me to buy it. I'm buying it because I love them. I love this stuff. I have a passion for it. That's why I like having it. But I'm not going to just uh, get rid of it and sell it off. But some people, you know, are you buying it to sell? Do you think you're going to get rich selling off your video game collection? And then what's the point in buying them in the first place? So you have to kind of ask yourself that question. Do you want them just to sit on the shelf to look pretty? Because, oh, look cool, you know. You might as well just buy collectibles like I do of Donkey Kong or the Thwomp or Alf or something, you know. At that point, you might as well just buy collectibles if you're not going to ever play them and just look at them. I mean, they do look great on the shelf, and I have a few of those collection pieces, but I wouldn't want every video game in my collection just to sit there on the shelf and collect dust and never play them. They're meant to be played. And then have fun with your collecting and don't allow yourself to get addicted to buying and showing off to strangers on the internet, which I had talked to a, a vlog out here about... Uh, the social media addiction and how I've seen a lot of people get sucked in and even myself has happened to me in the past where you get sucked into the the whole fun thing of everybody's buying and showing off stuff on the internet and so you want to do that similar thing but it's just so easy to uh, to get addicted to showing off and buying stuff uh, my buddy here Iowa Wretched Gamer Dad's had a great series all about addiction and how he struggled with it and it's nice to hear people finally talking about these topics this is, you know we all look at everything's fun and exciting here online but there never ever talks about kind of the dark side of like collecting and how you can financially ruin yourself you can ruin your family and stuff you can get addicted to where you know, you're buying so much stuff and you don't have the money for it you can't afford it but you can't stop and you're addicted like somebody is addicted to alcohol or something just as devastating as that so you really want to be careful especially in 2024 with buying stuff you know i know the xbox 360 is a hot console and a lot of people want to buy it, but make sure that you're buying the games that you want to play and you want to experience them don't just buy them because they're hot you know don't go out and buy um, this game, this Autobahn Polizzi game that's going for $200 now. When I bought it, it was $2.50. Don't just go out and buy it because it's rare and expensive because a few people are going crazy for it. You know, buy it if you want to actually play and experience it. Same thing with this expensive uh, most uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted from 2005, a launch title for the 360. Crazy. It's going for like $100 now. It's ridiculous. But it's really popular, you know. Don't buy that stuff just because it's rare and expensive. Buy it because you want to actually play and experience the games in your collection. Remember, these were meant to be played. These people created worlds crafted for you. They want you to experience the stories that they created so you can experience it. And that's what I like to do and why I prefer to collect video games for fun and enjoyment over monetary value. I mean, it's nice as humans, you know, we like to have things that are worth money. It's kind of cool to have something that's a rare promotional piece, but you don't want your entire collection to be of just rare stuff that's just there for showing off to people hope you guys enjoyed this topic though i would love to hear you guys uh let me know your thoughts uh please participate you know leave a comment would love to uh, respond to you guys if you guys want to film a video response that'd be awesome as well i'd love to check it out i always just ask you let me know about it so i can check it out i will post a link to your video uh, response as a comment here that way other people can ch check it out as well really had a lot of fun with this topic though hope you guys did as well look forward to hearing from you guys and uh, look forward to some more uh, discussion vlogs i have a lot more planned stuff i want to discuss this year and i love these videos you guys are amazing thank you so much for your support take care you guys have an amazing day and sleepy we'll see you next time